Hello Piglet users. Uh, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can import and play runtime animations. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is go to Sketchfab and download an example model with an animation. So I've already selected one for this tutorial. Uh, so search for Cartoon Hartman and uh, choose this Army Sergeant model in the top left here. Click Download 3D Model, choose the GLTF format. I'm going to shorten the name a bit so it's easier to work with. OK, so it's already downloaded. I have my download folder on the left here uh, in Windows Explorer. And we can see that we have the zip file for the model there. So uh, going to Unity now, uh, I'm in a new empty project in Unity 2018.4. Uh, ignore this plugins folder, by the way. Uh, that's just something put there by my code editor. So you won't have that. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is install Piglet into the project. Uh, so you would be doing this uh, from the Unity asset store. Um, but since the version that I'm demonstrating here isn't on the asset store yet, uh, I'm going to install it from this Unity package file on the left. OK, so Piglet is installed. Uh, it's added the Piglet folder on the left here. Um, so next, we're going to uh, start our script, which will perform the runtime GLTF import and also play the animation. So I'll create a new folder called Scripts. And uh, right click Create C Sharp Script. And I'm going to call this runtime animation behavior. OK, so in order for that script to run uh, in our scene, we have to attach it to some game object, of course. Um, so I'm going to right click in the scene hierarchy, uh, select create empty. Uh, I'll rename that game object to importer. And then I'm going to attach our script to it by clicking add component and selecting uh, runtime animation behavior. OK, now save the scene. So that's our basic setup for the scene. So now we'll go to the code. Um, whoops. Uh, so double click on the script here. Um, so this is the template script generated by Unity. So the first thing that we want to do is add uh, using Piglet to the top of the file. OK, uh, so we'll start by following the same steps that we would use if we were importing a static GLTF model without any animations. Uh, so what we need to do is uh, create a GLTF import task. And we can create that import task and start uh, like this. So we call uh, runtime GLTF importer that get import task and we pass it the path to the GLTF file that we want to load. So this is the path to the file that I just downloaded from Sketchfab. So in my case it's uh, located at c colon slash users slash ben slash piglet slash cartoon hartman dot zip. So just as an aside, uh, Piglet can also handle HTTP URLs. So um, it's also possible to directly download a GLTF file from a website. So that creates the import task, but it doesn't actually execute the import task. 
So in order to do that, um, we have to call move next on the task. So move next will uh, incrementally execute the GLTF import. So we normally do that in the update method. Okay, so that's it. So that's the minimal code that we would use to import a GLTF model at runtime. So let's go back uh, to Unity and see what we get when we press play. Okay, uh, so we can see that the model is being imported. Uh, we can only see a small piece of the model because it's very large. So if we switch to the scene view, for example, and we zoom out, uh, we can see that the whole model is there. But uh, we need to scale it down somehow uh, so that we can more easily work with it. Um, so we can do this by specifying some additional options uh, during the GLTF import. And I'll demonstrate how you can do that now. So going back to the code editor, uh, all we have to do is create an import options object. Whoops. And we have to configure that options object with the options that we want. Uh, in our case, we want uh, to use the auto scale option. So we set that flag to true. And we should also uh, set a target size. So from previous experience, I know that uh, a size of four units works well uh, with the default Unity scene and with the default position of the camera. So once we've uh, configured our options object, uh, we can pass it in as a second argument to get import task, and it will adjust our import accordingly. Okay, so now when we go back to Unity and we click play, uh, we should see the model scaled down to a reasonable size. Good, so that's what we wanted. Uh, that looks good for now. Um, so now we have to uh, actually start the animation playing. So that's our next task. So let's first uh, look at the root game object of the uh, imported model while we're still in play mode here. Uh, so we, if we look at that game object, we see there are a couple of uh, animation related components. Uh, the main component of interest is this animation component, which is what uh, Unity uses to play legacy animations at runtime. Um, so this component can have multiple animation clips. In this case, we have two animation clips. We have static pose, and take 001. Um, the actual animation from the GLTF file is the take 001 animation. And static pose is a special animation that's generated by Piglet uh, in order to reset the model to its default pose. Um, so you'll notice at the top of the inspector for animation, there's also uh, take 001 uh, mentioned here again. And that's indicating what uh, the default animation clip for this component will be. Um, so this is the clip that gets played when you call the play method on the animation with no arguments. So the other component uh, is animation list. And this is a helper component provided by Piglet. And it's simply a list of the, uh, an ordered list of the animation clips that were imported from the GLTF file. Um, so this isn't strictly needed to play animations, but um, it provides a convenient way of uh, playing the animation clips by their index in the file. And uh, I'll demonstrate what I mean by that uh, in a moment. So continuing on then, uh, what we want to do next with our script is we want to access this animation component and we want to call the play method on it to start playing the animation. Uh, so now we'll exit play mode and I'll go back to the script again. So we need to uh, get a reference to that animation component. And in order to do that, we need a reference to the root game object of the imported model. 
Um, so the, the way that we do that in Piglet is that we define a uh, handler for the event that the GLTF uh, import completes successfully. So uh, there's the import task has an uh, uncompleted handler, so we can assign a method to that. So we're going to make a new method in our class called uncompleted. I'll just use the edit editor to generate that. Um, so what gets passed into this uh, handler method is the root game object of the imported model. So at this point we know that the GLTF import has completed successfully. So we can use that root game object to get the animation uh, component that we're interested in. And we can do that like this. Okay, so, so now that we have that component, uh, we can call its play method and that will start playing the animation. So the, here I'm using the version of the play method without any arguments, and that will play whatever is the default clip for the animation component. Uh, so Piglet sets up the default clip to be whatever the uh, first animation clip is in the GLTF file. But uh, suppose um, that the GLTF file has multiple animation clips and you want to select a different one to play. Uh, the way that you would do that then is that you have to provide a string based key um, to the play method that identifies the particular anima animation clip that you want to play. So how do you get that key? Well, this is where um, the other component, the animation list component, comes in handy. So the animation list component has the list of imported animation clips. And then so we can just get the one that we want by index. And then the key for that clip is stored in the name field. So you may wonder why I'm using index one here. And it's because um, Piglet uses a convention that it stores the static pose clip at index zero. Um, so index one will be the index of the first real animation from the GLTF file. Okay, so that's it. That's all the code that we need to write. So if we go back to Unity now, we should see the animation playing. And indeed it does, so that looks good. And that concludes the runtime animation tutorial. Thank you.